Hello folks, and this is Kay uh, doing uh, into the camp tan campfire. This is part three. As you notice, this time we need a heavy weapon and a communications officer. Which means Boober and Shadow don't work on this one, as you notice. So we'll have to go around and figure out which one's heavy weapons and which one's communications. Our mod works as communications, uh, not a tie you know, Just figure out which ones you want. Anyway, Dante, I believe, is the best one for heavy weapons. And we'll go ahead and uh, use Squirrel. He's the other marksman. And he's also the communica uh, communications. He's also the fastest unit in the game. With a penalty of no stealth. So basically, he's fast, but he's very, very noisy. Uh, there is a Easter egg here, and unfortunately, I couldn't get the trigger. Or I mean, not really an Easter egg, but you know, something optional. And it says we have to find a way to contact the HQ. So first things first. Now you might not have noticed it, but there are a couple of tanks up ahead, so we have to reposition our guys. Like I said, you might be able to see, uh, see the turrets, but here you go. I'll move up closer so you can see all four of them all lined up in a row. Now they won't see us behind that wall, so we're fine. And again, see, like I said, they won't aggro if we're behind a wall here. As long as they don't physically see us in their line of sight, they won't activate. So we'll position them in. And see, even if I fire, they won't, you know, aggro. Anyway, here's the Easter egg that I couldn't get to work this time. You run up here, and then uh, if you go in far enough, it says, I wouldn't go there if I were you. Uh, and, uh, I mean, right before they shoot, giving you like half a second to uh, escape. Generally, you can escape, but but it's just kind of a cool thing. Anyway, due to the AI, they'll constantly shoot at that location. Or around that location. So pretty much we're covered there. They won't ever hit our guy. So we can go ahead and blow up that box. All of a sudden, mysteriously, we blow up that tank over there. That's kind of neat. <laughs> I have no idea how we blew up that tra tank, but uh, maybe it was a ninja. Who knows? <laughs> that makes the job easier. Anyway. See, there's some mortar, there's mortars there, and in case you miss, there's some more mortars, which I'll show you in a bit. But generally, these are quite easy targets. Should take you one mortar around to pop them, unlike a uh, final front, which is either one to two shots, depending on how you nail them. And if you do run in close enough, they will use their uh, machine gun turrets rather than their uh, main gun. So this would be the last one. Okay, there we go. And now I'll go ahead and show you more about uh, the class limits. As you can see here, Dante here is a heavy weapon specialist. Unfortunately, uh, Squirrel here is not. See, it says, I'm not a heavy weapon expert. I can't use this. Uh, again, showing you that there is some sort of class system and balancing. So if uh, 3DO actually wanted to make a first person class MMO style shooter, this would be defi definitely, looks like it would be gearing towards that direction. But I'm not going to get into a tangent about it. I'm, I'm just saying that, you know, you, you could definitely tell they, they had the mechanics to where they were building up to it uh, felt like they were leading that way and then just poof anyway as you can see here like I said Squirrel's the uh, fastest one now the reason that I brought Squirrel here is can, because he's also the a marksman besides being the uh, fastest thing in the game and uh, 
there is some mark there is some sniper ammo and a bazooka. So see if you had brought the other communication specialist, which wasn't a uh, sniper, you couldn't have used that, making the mission a little bit different for you. But since we brought a sniper, the game is the level is a little bit easier on us. As you see here, there's this path here. We'll go ahead and make sure Dante gets his bazookas. See, that's the other route you go is uh, if you don't have a sniper, you can just use your bazooka and clear your path that way. But we have a sniper rifle, so we can take our time and pick off the guys as we go. So as you can see here, they're quite clumped together, so a bazooka man can easily take them out. Also remember that we have uh, three more shells left, too, in case uh, we need those. So we'll go ahead and see, see there's one hidden behind the... Uh, box there. Count on our head. He spotted his friend dying, but unfortunately he didn't make it. And it looks like we're not going to be able to hit his helmet. Nope. So we'll have to go up the hill a little bit and see if we can try it again. As, as you can see, we can get a normal weapon lock on it. It's not working right. Maybe a little bit more. Here, we'll go way out here and see if we'll get him. Okay, a little more to the right. I got him. Okay, he's down. Have to be careful here because there's enemy snipers about. I mean, now you can see that there's a big old blob of like four guys there. And, oh, there's another guy. There's five guys there. So let's go ahead and take him out. Or after we kind of looked at their run paths a bit. See, this is why you have to make sure that your other guy is okay. Because uh, if you position your guys wrong, it'll end up being that uh, he'll get auto-aimed on and then he'll die and then you lose the mission. Even though you're A-OK -okay and fine. So always make sure that your guy's kind of out in the way of the corner and whatnot. This kind of affects later missions as well. That's why you'll see me like bounce between the two guys every once in a while to reposition them or kind of if I need this or that. Which is kind of like a handy thing. And unfortunately, even though that exploded everything, uh, it didn't kill anybody. <laughs> and it just made him aggro. It was kind of funny, but didn't work. I believe that there was a tower there or something. Don't know. I mean, it looked pretty high. This is the one thing I don't like about this game, though, is just the uh, getting everything, the limited range, and the uh, having to fine tune everything. Granted, you fire, like I said, you fire five shots a burst, but still, the manual aim just isn't isn't there, and it you kind of do miss it. It's a kind of a transition between play styles. Okay, we got two guys over there. We got one guy there in the corner. I don't see anything else here. Let's go ahead and yeah, we got one bullet left. So we'll go ahead and just I suppose bust bum rush it. Why the heck not? See we're we're not in range yet. Oh there we go, we got him and we got shot too. And eh, well. And we're not in range to engage these guys, unfortunately. Even though the auto aim is working just fine, it's just we're not in range. Kind of weird how they can hit us, but we can't hit them. But they're only firing one bullet at a time while we're firing a whole bunch. So, eh. uh. 
And there we go. I already the last guy. And we've got plenty of med kits down here. Like I said, the the other way you could have done it is just enter from the below entrance and use your bazooka men and just take them out one at a time. Using it that way. Anyway, we'll go ahead and move up Dante now. And it says, I'm not a communication expert. I can't use that. That's where the, uh, ra the uh, radio is. So i got to move Squirrel back up because he's the communications guy. He needs it. It says, a radio. Great. Now I need an antenna. So we got to find ourselves an antenna to use. And like I said, that speed really does matter. So just like I said, deploy your guys, however, and they won't automatically shoot either. You have to actually manually shoot them. They'll just stand there and get shot at. And there's a tank in the background there, if you can't see it. And that's how you walk your shot. Looks like the tank aggro does. And uh, here we go. Looks like I uh, missed my shot by a hair. It's a hair off, so we'll try this again. That got him. Yeah, I was seeing one guy up ahead there. And we'll go ahead and let Squirrel use his, uh, his little hinky dinky phone. Once you get everybody in position, as you, there's plenty of explosive barrels and stuff there we need to get at void. Because they'll still hurt you. Anyway, here's the antenna. And it patches in from radio, and uh, they're sending a submarine. So we just walk up and board it. And it says that there's a Tan Army base, or an island base, and we have to locate an undercover spy. Once we get on an island, there we go. So now we got all these boxes we have to deal with. So let's go ahead and blow up all the boxes. Because we can. It looks like it gave us some bazookas ammo. I guess the bazooka there is in case you use the fit and you, you know, you're utter, total and utter fail and they want to give you at least a chance of killing the tanks. I guess it's a 3DO mercy thing, giving you way more ammo than you need. We've got this last guy here, and here's a submarine. Now I believe that the uh, Final Front submarine has a O9 as its decal, and this one has an O. I, I think it is O5 as its decal. And I have to watch my other videos and kind of confirm or deny that, though. So, but I, I think that uh, that was an O9 that was in the uh, other videos for uh, Final Front. So see there is a, some attention to detail and also you can see there's a deck gun and whatnot. It says, oh I can't, leave, I can't leave my partner behind. But anyway we'll go ahead and call this video here. And uh, here's the summary. So later.